Hi guys, it's Laura from Front Office Rocks and welcome back to another video. This video is on a really hot topic of voicemail messages. What to leave on a voicemail message. And it came up because it is around the holidays. If you can see, I've got Santa Clauses behind me. Um, but I thought it would be a good general uh, topic to talk about, not necessarily just holidays, but I will address it. So no matter when you're watching this video, it will um, pertain to you. So voicemail messages. Should you have them? Yes. Anytime a patient calls your office um, after hours, they should get a voicemail message. Now, between the hours of eight and five, nine, eight to six, you know, Monday through Friday, nobody should be getting voicemail, okay? You should always be answering your phones. But after five or six o'clock at night, it is okay to have a voicemail message. Um, and it is important to have one. Now, here are some of my thoughts about this. Again, I'm not a proclaiming to know it all, but here are my, my couple thoughts about voicemail messages. First of all, uh, they need to be friendly. Um, make sure you pick the person who has the nicest voice, the, the friendliest demeanor, the one that sounds the best on the recording, because this could be your first impression for a new patient calling in. So make sure that you have a friendly voice. Make sure that it's a friendly message. You know, thank you for calling the dental office. We're sorry we missed your call. You must be reaching us after hours. Like make it friendly and nice. Um, there are some voicemail messages out there I've heard in dental offices where it starts with, if this is a medical emergency, dial 911. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think there was some reasons in the past that people had that, but I don't think that's uh, necessary anymore. I don't know about you guys, but for me, if I thought I was having a heart attack, the last place I would be calling is my dental office. So um, I don't think you need that on the voicemail. I don't think that it is, in my opinion, good to say we don't accept cancellations on this voicemail. The reason is, and this is my opinion, it may work for you, but my opinion is, first of all, they're still gonna leave a message, right? Or they're not gonna leave a message and just assume, well, it's on you because you didn't allow them to leave the message. Or it's telling them that you have a problem with cancellations. By having to make a rule that says we don't accept cancellations on here, I, I think it's just advertising to the patients, this happens a lot and we don't accept them this way. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, if you have it on your voicemail and it works for you, that's totally great, that's just my opinion. And then next would be to, if you, if you have an emergency number that they need to call, if you have an emergency plan, if there's a way you want them to reach you, if it is emergency, whether it's send an email or here's a phone number to call or whatever the case may be, you wanna make sure that's included in the voicemail so that if you do have a plan for the patients to reach you when you're not in the office, um, definitely put that in the voicemail message. And then the clear expectations of what's gonna happen when they leave the voicemail when you're gonna get back to them. So if they leave a voicemail here, you'll call them before noon the next day, you'll call them on the next business day, you'll like let them know when to expect they're gonna leave a voicemail. Because many times, I don't know if you've called other places, but many times you call places and you get a voicemail and you kind of wonder, is it ever gonna be returned or are they ever gonna follow through on it? So if you can let the patient know that you'll check all the messages and that you will follow up by noon the next day you're open or something like that, so at least they know when to expect um, the, the message to be returned. You could also offer them to send you an email if, or another way to reach you if you've got chat or something like that. If that's a faster way to get to your office, then offer that also. And who knows, by the time you watch this video, maybe there'll be, you know, artificial intelligence. You can have a robot get back to them. But make sure that you're always um, doing the best and the most, um, of you know, best for the patients and the most technologically advanced options that you have in your dental office. Now, specific to holidays, because it is around the holidays here, patient uh, or an office did ask me about what they should leave on their holiday message. And this is kind of specific to holidays or any time you're closed outside of your normal hours. So let's say it's a holiday, let's say your office shuts down for a half a day meeting and you don't have somebody answer the phones, you really should have somebody answer the phones, but just in case you don't, let's say your whole team is going away for a seminar for a day and you're gonna let it go to voicemail. Don't recommend it, but let's say you do. 
I would specifically leave a message that is um, that has that date and what's going on. So when they call on, let's say December 24th and you're closed, say we will be closed December 24th to December 26th. However, the doctor will be checking messages or if it's a true emergency, call this number. Um, let's say you're closed for an afternoon meeting. We will be closed the afternoon of Friday, December 10th for a team training or team meeting. However, we will check all voicemail messages and return your call before 5 p.m. today or whatever the case may be. But tell them specifically when they call in, you know, do a short term message that says those dates or that day or those times that you're not answering the phone and when they can expect a return phone call from you. Because then that way they don't feel like it's some old message left from five years ago. It's actually a message from right now and it's gonna incentivize them, motivate them more to leave a message for you because they know you're gonna call back and then they know um, they know why you know, they're not, you're not answering the phones. Now, final story, which is kind of funny about that. We actually did that. We shut down one Friday afternoon and we took our entire team wine tasting. It was a bonus that they had won. We had done really well the quarter before and the whole team jumped in a limo and we got to go wine tasting. But we said on the voicemail message that we were closed for training in office training, which in a way, I guess we were learning about wine, right? But the patient the day before was in the office and knew what we were doing the next day because we were telling patients because we were all excited and left the, he left a voicemail message that Friday afternoon saying, I know that you guys aren't training. You're out drinking wine, which is fine because he's a good patient and he loves us and all of that. But for the new patients calling in, they didn't need to know that we were out tasting wine that we were doing a team building event and we just said that we were in training. So funny story about that. I definitely think your voicemail message should include all the things I've mentioned and then put a special one on it um, if you are closed for a special, you know, certain period of time so that patients know that your voicemail is not five years old. They're actually going to get heard and get responded to. So thank you for that question. I think that was amazing. Please ask more. Put them in the comments below message us, you know, write a comment and I will address any questions that come up. Subscribe so we can keep talking about all these fun topics like wine tasting. And thank you again for taking time a few minutes to spend with me.